Well, we're going to be talking about Nikki Haley, guys, here in this video. Super Tuesday is fast approaching and we already got a taste of what's going to happen on Super Tuesday. It is going to be a bloodbath. It is going to be a Trump wave. Trump is absolutely going to demolish Nikki Haley on Super Tuesday. A lot of states are going to be voting and Trump is going to win every single state. I believe that even the establishment media actually knows this. Nikki Haley is just hanging around and hanging around for no good reason. No good reason except to be a Democrat plant. She got absolutely demolished in the uh, Missouri caucus. She didn't even come close. She lost by 72 points. Nikki Haley some kind of way believes that um, she is being competitive. She's not. She's wasting time. She's wasting other people's money. Now, guys, Nikki Haley signed a pledge to actually support the GOP nominee. She said that. But also, she also said that she would never actually run against Trump in a presidential election. She did it anyway. She lied. So now Nikki Haley has come out and said now that, hey, I don't need to abide by my pledge. This woman is going to stab Trump in the back. She is a part of the establishment. She is establishment. And Nikki Haley cannot be trusted. Now, if she was to actually become the GOP nominee, she needs the support of MAGA. She is not going to beat Joe Biden without the support of MAGA. But when we hear that she is backtracking out of her pledge to basically support Donald Trump. She has no intentions whatsoever of getting the MAGA vote. She's not. She cannot win a general election without MAGA. It's just not going to happen. Now, she was actually on with um, uh, on Meet the Press with uh, Kristen Welker. And Kristen Welker straight up asked her if she would continue to support Donald Trump or support Donald Trump concerning he actually signed that pledge among some other things. So let's go ahead and get into this interview, guys. Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, become a channel member, member live stream every single Friday. Just starts at five dollars per month. If you watch on Rumble, click the join button, get access to the same thing. So here we go, guys. This is this interview here with Kristen Welker. Let's go ahead and play it. Nomination, given that uphill battle she faces. I think we push hard. I think we fight. You're going to have 16 states and territories that are voting on Tuesday. And so a lot of people's voices are going to be heard. And that's what this has all been about. You've only had three or four states that have voted up until now. We're a big country and we want everybody to feel like they had the opportunity to vote for someone and not just against someone. And I think that's the biggest thing we hear is people are so desperate for normal. The thing is, nobody really is voting for you. The support that Nikki Haley has gotten, we all know it, is from never Trumpers and Democrats. And the Democrats and never Trumpers are just voting against Trump. They've even said it on camera. So. And that's what we want to give them as normal. Let's talk about Super Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If you wake up on Wednesday and you haven't won anywhere. She won't. And that's an if. Would you then need to make the decision that it's time to drop out of the race? I've always said this needs to be competitive. As long as we are competitive, as long as we are showing that there is a place for us, I'm going to continue to fight. That's always been the case. Would you see yourself as competitive if you didn't win on Super Tuesday any state? Well, usually y'all are the ones that decide what's competitive and what's not. So, you know, y'all decided whether I was competitive in Iowa or New Hampshire or South Carolina. So we're going to continue to just keep pushing through. I don't look too far ahead. I look at what do the American people want? If 70 percent of Americans say they don't want Donald Trump or Joe Biden, that's not a small number. If 30 to 40 percent of all these early states have said they want to vote for the direction of where we want to take the country, that's not a small number. And so that's why we continue to push forward. But would it be tough for you to make the argument to stay in this race if you don't win anywhere on Super Tuesday? Well, first, let's see what happens on Super Tuesday. I don't like to look at what ifs or hypotheticals. I think we always have to live in the moment. They didn't think we'd make it to Iowa and we came one percent from second. They didn't. They said we were going to be 30 points down in New Hampshire. 
Hampshire, we got 43 percent. They didn't think that it would be between me and Trump in the end, and it is. So I think we just keep going and looking and saying, what else can we do? How many more people can we touch? And what message can we continue to give? Based on what you're saying, Ambassador, are you prepared to stay in this through the convention? Is that your plan? If the people want to see me go forward, they'll show it. They'll show it in their votes. They'll show it in their donations. They'll show it in the fact that they want us to continue to go forward. Nikki Haley's donors are actually uh, pulling out because they see the writing on the wall. The people have spoken, man. They don't want you. They don't want you, but she's still hanging around. This is about really trying to get everyone to realize that this primary isn't between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. Yes, on the ballot, that's what you see. This primary is what is the direction of the Republican Party? Are we going to go where the Republican Party is MAGA? It's MAGA. The voters have said that you had Donald Trump. He grew government. He didn't reduce the size of government. He put us eight trillion dollars in debt in just four years, more than any other president. And you're seeing a Republican Party follow him into that wasteful spending, not talking about fiscal discipline. This is about Donald Trump, who believes that you should be more of an isolationist, that America doesn't need friends. That's his focus. My focus is we need to start respecting taxpayer dollars. We need to reduce the size of government. We need to put those resources more in the hands of the people. We need to start focusing on getting our kids reading again. We need to secure our borders and be a country of law and order. And we believe in peace through strength, which means our focus is to prevent war. That's two very different Republican parties. You're laying this out in very stark terms. It, it sounds like from your perspective, this is the a battle for the Republican Party. You've been sharpening your attacks against former President Trump. Everyone has noticed in recent days, in recent weeks. Have you taken the prospect, the possibility of endorsing him off the table at this point? It's go. not anything I think about. What I have but said is- But is it off the table, Ambassador? It sounds like you are in a different place. Are people misinterpreting what you're saying? Have you moved to a place where you're no longer planning to endorse him? Well, I think, first of all, you're if you talk about an endorsement, you're talking about a loss. I don't think like that. When you're in a race, you don't think about losing. You think about continuing to go forward. What I can tell you is I don't think Donald Trump or Joe Biden should be president. I don't think that we need two candidates in their 80s. I don't think we want a Joe Biden who calls his opponents fascists or a Donald Trump who calls his opponents vermin. No one wants that. I think people want a new generational leader that is going to go back to what the American dream is, what we want for our kids in a place that's something that we can be proud of again. Let me try it this way. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. So is that a no? Are you bound by the RNC pledge? I, the RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's So you're no Trump's longer daughter. bound by that pledge? No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not something I'm thinking about. And I Wow. She already said no. She said no. So she pledges now not to support Trump. Is anybody surprised by this? I'm not surprised. I think that while y'all think about that, I'm looking at the fact that we had thousands of people in Virginia. We're headed to North Carolina. We're going to continue to go to Vermont and Maine and all these states to go and show people that there is a path forward. And so I don't look at what ifs. I look at how do we continue the conversation? You know, it's interesting. Chris Christie said he was asked why he didn't endorse you when he dropped out. He said because he thought you would endorse Donald Trump. But it sounds like what you're saying is that you're leaning against endorsing Donald Trump. Can you just put a little bit of clarity? Are you leaning against endorsing Donald Trump at this point? I truly am not thinking about any of that. And, you know, I mean, look, there's a so you're not taking it off the table. There's a Fair huge to difference between me and Chris Christie. Chris Christie ran because he just didn't want Trump. Mm -hmm. I am running because it's not about Trump. I voted for him twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration. This is not a never Trump movement. This is the fact that I see America going into a bad direction. One that OK. She's right about Chris Christie. Chris Christie ran on. I hate Trump and I want him in office now. Now, Nikki Haley 
is pretty much doing the same thing because she said that Donald Trump should be in office. This woman is a snake, man. That's going off a fiscal cliff, one where our kids don't think they're ever going to be able to afford a home, one where we've got only 31 percent of eighth graders in our country reading, one where we have a ridiculously open border and one where we're about to fall into war if we don't go forward. I think that's dangerous. I think that's not what Americans want. And that's what I'm trying to say is we need to stop this direction and go in a new direction where we can be safe and healthy, economic freedom freedom of all types so that we can have Americans that feel like they have a government working for them again. All right. I want to ask you about January 6th. that has been in the headlines again. OK, so I'm going to leave it right there, guys. You guys saw that Nikki Haley is ready to stab Donald Trump in the back. There's some people out there that believe that um, that the no labels party is probably an option. That she may actually, um, after she drops out of the uh, GOP primary, she may actually go the no labels route. Now, Nikki Haley said no, but why should anybody actually believe that she won't actually do that? Consider, you know, she said that she wouldn't run against Trump. She's doing it now. She signed a pledge that says she would support the GOP nominee, Trump. Now she's saying, nah, I ain't going to do that. And now she's saying that she wouldn't run on no labels because she says she was she is a Republican. Do we really think that she won't actually run no labels? I'm not really sure. Because if she goes the uh, no labels route, she's going to be paired up with a Democrat. She says that she doesn't want a Democrat. But yet she's pandering to Democrats. Funny how it works, guys. Nikki Haley is scum. That's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white network fans, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you next time.